Hello, everyone. My guest today is Felix Vandemel. He serves as the co- he co-founded and now serves as the CEO of a company called Calibra. Uh, as Calibra CEO, he's responsible for the company's global business strategy and has led the company from idea to founding to more than 10 years of record growth and industry leadership. Before that, he served as a researcher at the Semantics Technology and Applications Research Laboratory uh, in Brussels, where he found focused on uh, crawlers for the semantic web and semantic data integration. Uh, well, well-rounded, lots of great degrees. I can barely pronounce Felix. Are you ready to take us to the top? Ready. <laughs> Do you like that? I like to say a lot of degrees I can't pronounce. It makes you sound really smart, right? Yeah. I like All right. It. <laughs> tell us about the, tell us about the company. So you came first off, you came on, let me see, this would have been about uh, almost a year ago at this point. So yeah, about a yep. year ago, but give us a quick update. What's the company do for people that missed that first episode? Sure. So we're an uh, enterprise software company. Um, so we, we typically help uh, large companies better find, understand, and trust data. Uh, so we specialized in uh, data governance and, and data cataloging, which basically uh, um, means, like I said, we help companies understand what data they have, where they can find it, and then ultimately that, that they can really trust it. And mm-hmm. so I think especially today, there's loads and loads of, of data. Companies have lots of data, but often there's a problem that they don't know where actually um, it's stored. So we, we call it like a data catalog, like a Amazonification of data, like you, you shop for the, the right data set, uh, but also around, around the trust and the control. And, and, and the news has been a lot about GDPR, data privacy, data protection. That's right. So that's something that we help our customers uh, with as well, uh, helping them build a kind of a registry of what data they have, who has access to it, who's responsible, uh, and then really a lot of workflows where people can, in a structured way, work together around uh, the data. And Felix, you told me about a year ago, the average customer is paying about 16500 bucks a month for kind of what you provide. Is that still about the average ARPU or have you gone down or up market? No, it's still very similar. Okay. Um, so kind of the, the model is what we call land and expand, kind of a similar land deal, as we say. But then what, we, what we're really excited about is that because uh, customers really start adopting the product pretty rapidly. Uh-huh. Uh, pretty quickly, we, we get to large expansions where customers actually use it more and they use it in different business units or for different use cases. And so that's how kind of the usage expands. What's your typical expansion from you know year one ACV or to year two ACV? Are you doubling it, tripling it, less? Um, it depends. I, I think some of it is, is doubling. Some of it, we go from 150K to a, a million dollar AR deal. Yeah. Um, so it really depends on the use case, the type of company. Um, so it's hard to it's hard to say in, in average. You had 200 customers a year ago. Where are you at today? Yeah, we're we're close to 300 customers. Oh, great. Um, yep. And where's most of that growth come from? Is it kind of outbound related, or it's mostly so um, it's mostly outbound enterprise sales, uh, right? Um, but we we have a, a big uh, marketing team as well. Do a lot of like, digital marketing. And then we have an SDR team kind of qualifying those leads and and, and, and put them in, putting them in the hands of our outbound sales team. Mm-hmm. And then look, 300 customers times that ARPU puts you at somewhere around 5 million a month. Have you passed that 5 million mark yet or you're flirting with it? Almost. This month or next month, you think, or no? Yeah, a little bit further, but it's going to be close. Okay, this year? Yes. Okay, definitely this year. Very good. So yeah, breaking 60 million in AR, obviously super healthy. Now, I want to get more of the backstory now that we have some of the, the numerical data. So remind us again, what year did you launch the company in? Uh, we launched a company in 2008. 2008. By the way, hell of a year to launch a company, huh? Yeah, and actually, it was, uh, like I said, we, start, we, we started a company kind of out of school, my first job. And uh, interesting, interesting year to start a company, but ultimately it was good for us because it really started our, our growth where all of the, the banks started to need data governance. And mm-hmm. so that's really helped us in the beginning. And have you raised any additional capital since the last time we spoke when you had raised about $75 million? Yes, we did raise a series D round in January, so a couple of months ago, uh, with our existing investors. We weren't planning to, but, but they were really excited. Uh, we got great offers, uh, so we, we love to have them on board, great partners to the business. And so we raised another 58 million uh, series D round. Okay, got it. So, sorry, you said, you said fi- another 58? 58, yes. Got it, so 133 total, 133 million. Correct. So walk me through, I mean, that's obviously, we've had maybe 10 people that have raised that amount or more on the show ever. And I've done, you know, a thousand plus of these interviews. It's super, super capitalized, obviously, right? So so what are what's the advantage of that? And talk to me about some of your fears. I mean, what's the downside of having that much money? Um, it's a good question because when we started the company, we started in Europe. And so we got the company to over 10 million euro in revenue and profitable and growing at 200%. So mm-hmm. we know what it's like to build a company, basically um, bootstrap a company with, with only raising like 1 million euro. Um, so on a very, very little money. But at a certain point in time, we found where, where there's clear market opportunity, 
you are the leader and you want to build like a, a large successful software company, it does take uh, quite a bit of investments. If you want to start growing and scaling your enterprise sales team, you want to you want to invest, continue to invest in R and D and product. It, it does become expensive, and so when you are in that leadership position, it's it, we really want to remain that leader in the market, basically own that own that market category. And so that's why for us it made sense to to invest a larger amount of money. So one, um, you have a longer runway, right? You, you know that's depending. You never know what happens, kind of macroeconomically. Yep. Um, so it, it gives you that security. Two, um, you have the opportunity to be a little bit opportunistic. If opportunities arise, you can say yes to those, whereas otherwise you might have to say no. Um, and three, uh, kind of a clear signal to the market that you are the leader in your category. It becomes harder for other companies to raise money, things like that. Uh, so these are all the benefits. I think the risks are that the, the risk is always when you have money, you, you tend to spend it. And, you, and so you got to be really, really disciplined to make sure you focus on the right things yep. um, and prioritize really, really well. Yep. And that just requires another level of discipline if, if you have the money in the bank. It sounds like you were you had a significant amount of leverage in terms of this last race because you really didn't need it. But investors, you know, they were getting your board decks. They're really excited. So you said, OK, we'll do it. I'm guessing they gave you great terms and you're a hell of a negotiator. I mean, did you break the billion dollar valuation mark? Or are you close? Where, where Can you share more about that? Yeah, we, we don't share um, um, valuation. Um, so can't really comment on that, but we, we got we got great terms. We, we're happy with it. I think I, I, I will always always recommend don't focus purely on, on that pure valuation number. Uh, there's a lot of other terms that, that are important. Uh, having the right partners on board are important. Is important, um, and so um, it, there's, there's more that comes to it than just purely the, 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 the valuation. A few more economics questions here. Payback period. Are you getting more aggressive now that you have more capital? What do you like to keep payback period at? Um, kind of similar. We are probably around, it depends, around 16, 16 months or so. Yep, and I'm curious actually how that compared. You you were at, uh, oh, we didn't talk about that last time. Okay, but 16 months today, got it. So so doing the math, 16 months, if people are paying you yep. kind of 16,500, uh, kind of an average monthly right now, you're totally comfortable spending you know a quarter of a million bucks acquiring one of these customers. Yes. Yeah, got it. And and so you're doing back of the napkin math here, obviously, in terms of lifetime value. What do you assume minimum lifetime value is? It's really hard to say because we have very, very little churn. So in a way, it's, it's almost indefinite. Obviously, yeah. that, that becomes hard because we have we have really low churn and, and great expansion. So our net dollar retention rate is something that we look at, and that, that's really high. How high um, above 100 is that? Uh, almost, yeah, oh, around 130. 130, okay, 130. And that's uh, annual uh, net revenue retention. Yes. Yeah, got it. Um, th- that's why I asked. So, so true or false, lifetime value has become less and less important for you in terms of a meaningful metric to drive the company because it's just, it's so high at this point. It doesn't actually enable you to make good decisions on it. Yes, I think it's a hard metric. I think, I think, uh, so we, we think um, uh, payback period, customer acquisition cost, and then revenue retention rate, churn. Are, these are the, the real metrics that we, we, we look at. Yep, very good. Uh, and what is churn? How low is it? Uh, it's like 4 4% or so a year. Annually, and that's revenue? Yes. Okay, that's great. And uh, team size today, where are you guys at? Uh, we're about 300 people. Okay, and where's um, home? Where's everyone based? Uh, it's about, uh, I'd say 55 to 60% in the U S mostly in New York. And then we have engineering in, uh, in Belgium and Poland. Uh, and then we have offices in, in London, Paris, Germany. We opened an office in Australia. So pretty spread, spread out. That's great. So U S, uh, Europe and Australia. And then in terms of, um, in terms of where the kind of this capital raise most of it is going, I mean, is it, is it going towards testing additional acquisition channels? Is it going towards team size? Kind of, kind of where do you think you're going to be spending most of this money? Um, it's really around scaling both sales and marketing and R&D. Uh, so continuing to kind of scale sales team and everything that comes with it um, from a marketing legion perspective as well. And then really on the product and R&D side, uh, being pretty aggressive in how we build out the platform. And then just making sure you have all the, the necessary functions around customer support, customer success, uh, professional services, HR, recruiting, finance, legal, all, all these things become really important. And so making sure you just build the company in a very balanced way. When you think about your option of potentially going public, what kinds of things go through your head, the pros and cons? It's not something that we that we, we think a lot about today. It's really all about building the company. But I, I, I always want to build the company in a kind of a, a thoughtful way. Um, and I think if you do that correctly, all the rest becomes, becomes a lot easier. And so that's really how we think about it. So as we build the company, 
uh, do it very thoughtfully and then continuously uh, kind of really understand our, our business model. What are the key drivers? Uh, how can we become more predictable? Uh, things like that become really important. Who's the biggest competitor right now? Uh, it's probably uh, Informatica. I would Informatica. say Informatica, IBM. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. Let's wrap up here, Felix, with the famous five. Number one. What's your favorite business book? Uh, favorite business book. Um, it's a good one. I, it's not necessarily my favorite, but it's a recent one. Uh, the, the new book from uh, John Dora on uh, OKRs. And I forgot the title. Yep, John uh, Dora. We'll look it up. I, I yeah. know he released one recently, so we'll look that up. But um, that's a pretty good book. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying? I like, uh, I know I've said the same thing last time, uh, the, the CEO of uh, Zora that recently went public, uh, Teen. Yep, he's good. Number, uh, he's an investor. He's, he's not an investor, but he's a... Uh, with the index company, and I like him a lot. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building the company? Uh, good question. Um, Gmail. <laughs> Gmail. Okay, good. And uh, what's your situation? Married, single? You have kiddos? Uh, married, uh, one kid, second on the way. That's cool. Oh, congratulations. And how old are you? I'm 34. 34. Last question, Felix. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Um, I think it's good. Didn't know a lot. It made me start Calibra. Good to not so know a lot. Is that what you said? Not, not, yeah, to not know a lot. Exactly. Guys, good. there, there you have it. Luxury. Good to not know a lot. Again, data is really critical when you look at GDPR, data as governance. Uh, that's you know one reason Kleber is growing so fast. On top of that, he's driven this company you know, since 2008 with super healthy economics. Now, three, 300 customers paying on average 16 uh, 16500 bucks per month. So almost breaking that beautiful kind of five, six, 50, 60 million dollar ARR mark. 130% net revenue retention annually. Again, his team of 300 based between US, Europe, and Australia. 133 million bucks raised. Felix, thank you for taking us to the top. Thank you.